Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Mo Time and here in the part three of my little mini series on servicing your mower from home, I'm going to take you through the last and final stage which is the oil in your engine. So we're going to look at uh, why we change the oil, when to change the oil and I'll show you through how to change the oil. So yeah, let's get into it. So let's start with why we change the oil in our mower engines. Um, so basically you change your oil, uh, you should be changing it around every 20 to sort of 40 hours of use. Um, obviously for contractors who use their mowers uh, every day, our oil changes are more often than someone who say just uses their mower for their own private residence. But generally a broad run to go through is over every 20 to sort of 40 hours or 50 hours sort of say you should be changing your oil out. So why we change the oil? Basically with oil over time and over use, it breaks down. And so there's a bunch of elements in the oil that keep the engine running well. So you got a bunch of elements in oil that are used for lubrication and then uh, secondly for cooling purposes and, and once those elements break down the oil can no longer do those things that it is intended to do such as like I said keep your engine cool so it'll overheat um, etc and also uh, lubrication so if you don't uh, you know, if you've got a lot of metal parts moving within each other and there's nothing there to keep them from heating up and keeping them lubricated and running cleanly, then yeah, that's a big, uh, big uh, issue that'll come up with your engine. So yeah, that is why it is necessary to change your oil. Also, over time, oil just gets uh, dirty and filthy. You might have heard of oil. You know, when you look at oil when it's brand new, it's very clean uh, looking. And then if you look at old oil, you'll notice it's very black and, and very like tar looking. So. So what happens over time is the, en the engine oil gets dirty and that can end up, end up actually damaging uh, your engine as well, which is ideally, of course, not what we want. So that is why it is really important to, you know, like I said, every 20 to 50 hours be changing your oil to put some new stuff in. Um, and like I said with the air filter, doing these things regularly just prolongs the life of your engine. Um, and again, it doesn't come the weekend and it's time for you to mow and your mower won't start for you and it drives you nuts. So um, we've all seen those guys who are just pulling away at the cord and girls who are pulling away at the cord, pulling away at the cord and, they can, uh, and nothing ever happens. And we, you know, we don't want to be that person on the weekend come time when you get a chance to mow the lawn. You want your engine to fire up and run perfectly. So this is why it is important to keep servicing your mower on a regular basis. So yeah, at least you know, at least service it once a year. Like your air conditioning units, get them serviced once a year, and that'll be a reminder to, oh, I've got to service my mower once a year, at least. Um, obviously, for contractors, it needs to be more often than that, but um, yeah, like so if you're a general homeowner, just once a year is fine. And that at least will, you know, decrease the chances of having issues with your engine and not firing come the weekend or wherever is your time to mow your lawn. So, yeah, so that's sort of why um, and when you should be changing your oil. Along also with when you should be changing your oil, if you've bought a brand new mower, then you should be changing the oil out in the first sort of five hours of use. Um, just to sort of run your mower in, run that engine in, and then clean it out and put fresh oil in, and then that starts from, then you can start uh, to change it from that 20 to sort of 40 hour period um, from then on. So yeah, that's uh, why and when you should be changing your oil. And so now I'll take you through uh, how to change your oil. So when it comes to changing your oil, there are sort of two ways basically you can do that. Um, one method is, you know, locating your oil dipstick over here on the Hondas. It's on the right hand side of the engine. Um, and the, the common way for people who just do it at home is you literally just tip the mower over, take your dipstick out, tip it over and let it flow out into a ice, uh, ice cream container or some sort of container or oil drip pan or whatever you sort of got for that. 
Um, now that is the easiest and cheapest way to do it. It doesn't cost you any money apart from a used up ice cream container or something like that. But just be cautious when you do do it. Um, you know, if you don't have a lot of strength and your mower goes over, um, just be cautious obviously tipping it over. Um, you don't want to tip it over and then it gets too heavy for you and you end up uh, losing it and damaging your handlebars or anything like that. So just keep an eye on that or if you've got someone around who can help you uh, roll it over, then even better, second pair of hands is always handy. So yeah, that's one way to do it and probably most ways people do it who don't own one of these removal kits. Um, but yeah, the second way is to use a uh, oil removal kit. So I've had this one about 10 years as you can tell because the box is literally degrading and falling apart. Um, yeah, I've had this for ages and these are very inexpensive. As I spoke about uh, in the previous first two videos in servicing, this stuff to do is very inexpensive. Um, this oil kit I think cost me about 30 bucks uh, just from my local mower shop and it's just a Victor. Uh, removal oil kit. So we'll pull that out. This is what I use obviously. Um, just saves any tipping of the engine um, and that and you just, yeah, quick, quick couple of minutes to set up and away you go. So yeah, I'll get this out and we'll start extracting the oil. So these kits just come with a main bottle obviously for the oil to go into, some tubing for the oil to run through, and then a rubber seal so we'll just open up this, like so. Super easy to do, like you don't have to be a genius to buy one of these and work it out. Um, all that rubber seal does is go in the top there and you just push that in a bit to seal it so it cr creates um, pressure. And then the only little other thing is uh, this little pump, this simple little hand pump. That's it, and all that does is just screws into the top here. Like so, just screw it up, done. And then I'll just show you here. You've got a little hole here. So you just poke one of the ends of the tubing in there, like so. And that's it. That's literally all it is, that simple. All right. Now all you do is crack your oil thing open. Uh, just be cautious too um, when you're doing the service uh, oil change on your mower, just make sure you have a rag or something handy to wipe your dipstick on. Ideally make it a clean rag because you're wiping the dipstick that's going back into the engine so you don't want to be putting stuff on it and um, and then putting that back in. Yeah, you can see my oil's pretty good. I change mine pretty often but you can see my oil's quite clean still just because I look after my mowers and I like to service them regularly. Apart from that last air filter. If you saw that video, that was a bit embarrassing. That air filter was filthy. Anyway, we'll just clean around there a little bit. There we go, we'll pop that up there so we don't lose it. And then what we do, stick that in. Might bring you a bit closer, you can see. There you go, now you'll be able to see the oil come out. Now all this does is you just, very simple technology. Um, you just pump this little pump and you'll see it suction or cipher the oil out of the engine. There you go. And that's it, that's all these little kits are, it's that simple. So if you do suffer from any sort of injury or something that you can't roll a mower over, it's just too heavy for you, or you're of age where the, yes, you know, tipping a heavy mower is, is not your thing, then I definitely recommend just getting one of these little oil removal kits, super easy to use. You just give it a couple of pumps and that's it. That last bit out. Just make sure we're down the bottom. I think that's all of it. Alright, 
there we go. Just give it a bit more pumps to suction that last bit through. And that's it. Done. There you go. Oil's out of there. We'll put that aside now. All right, so let's talk about oil now. Um, so depending on your engine will depend on your uh, type of oil you're gonna run. I've always just run the Honda Premium Oil because this is my Honda engine. Um, if you're unsure about what oil is most appropriate for your engine, just take a photo of your engine and head down to your local uh, mower shop and they'll be able to sort you out with the right oil. Um, but yeah, but when it comes to volume of oil, approximately four to sort of 600 mils depending on the make and um, of your engine, but that's uh, roughly between the, the ranges of how much oil you'll require to top your engine up. Now with that range of four to 600, always just start on the lower number, uh, put in 400 mil and then just check your dipstick and you'll be able to gauge from there whether you need to put more in or whether you don't. Now, when it comes to dipsticks, so this is an important thing and not many people are aware of this, depending on the manufacture of your engine will depend on whether you need to screw your dipstick in or, or on some of the old Victors and Briggs and Strattons and stuff, uh, or the Kawasaki's, they don't have thread. On Hondas, they have a thread, as you can see there. Um, but on some of the, uh, yeah, like I mentioned, the Victors or the Briggs and Strattons uh, uh, or the Kawasaki's, etc., they just have like a little locking mechanism. Now, why I'm talking about this is because, yeah, some will say that uh, you need to lock it in and then unlock it and then bring the dips back out to check the correct level um, and, and that. But yeah, so just double check with your, um, you know, you could Google that, just find out your engine and find out how to correctly check the oil on your Honda. Uh, on your engine. Now with Honda, you don't screw it in. Uh, with Hondas, you just place it in and then pull it back out and that's all you do. Um, yeah, you don't, with Honda engines, you don't screw the dipstick all the way in. Stay away. Um, you don't screw it all the way in and then back out because that's just, yeah, not how you do it on a Honda. So yeah, just make note of that when you are checking your oil, uh, make sure you're doing it correctly for your specific engine. So yeah, anyway, now like I mentioned, I'm going with the Honda Premium because that's again like just what I run for Honda and what is what is most recommended um, and that's the 10W30 as you can see here. Now the thing about the Honda bottles and other bottles have them as well, they have a millimetres on the side here so you know how much you are putting in. So we've got two, four, six, eight and we are looking at putting about 400 mils in today and I've got about 420 in there so just enough um, to finish this bottle of oil off um, but yeah like I mentioned just put in 400 mils first and then put in little bits more um, if it's not coming up to the level on your dipsticks so on particular dipsticks um, you'll have either a metal one on Hondas they are plastic um, and they have this little sort of crisscross section and that's basically obviously this is the bottom and then you want your oil to be at the top crisscross um, once you finish you don't want to over um, over lubricate and put too much oil in your engine it's not good for your engine so make sure you do stay to the mark some people think oh, if I whack more in it'll last long etc no that's not how it works just go by the markings, go to the max and stop there. Um, it's not like spraying a herbicide of a weed killer. It's not like put in another 50 mils because it'll make it die faster. That's not how it works. Just follow the correct, um, you know, mils and how much to put in and stay to that. Um, so yeah, back to the dipsticks. If you have a metal one, um, some of them will have like a little gouge out of it and that'll just sort of indicate where the max one is and the minimum. Um, but yeah, like I mentioned on the Honda ones, they are plastic and just have this little crisscross markings up to the top here of where it needs to be once you're full. So yeah. All right, now tipping in your oil, um, depending on your engine, some people will use a funnel. It's a bit easier, less of a mess but just make very sure that your funnel is very clean because again, you're tipping fresh oil in there and you don't want any muck in your funnel running down into your oil pan. So yeah, but with the Hondas, as I'll show you, they have an inbuilt um, pourer like that. 
So yeah, and then you just unscrew this cap at the top and away you go. So now, like I mentioned, I've got 400 and oh, about 420, sorry, 450 in this one. So we'll put 400 in like I mentioned to begin with and then we'll measure from there. much easier having these poor things you don't have to carry anything else around you can just pop this up and away you go all right so I'm going to stop there now once you've poured your oil in um, don't automatically go and check it you need to let the oil just settle for a little bit so you get an accurate measurement so yeah I just wait like 30 seconds or while I'm talking to you guys I'll just let it sort of sit down in the pan and find itself um, and then yeah, once you've given it up, you know, 20, 30 seconds, you can then go ahead and check your oil. So we'll just give that a clean first, and then we go in and back. Oh, we're spot on the mark. So I'll just show you guys so you can see. The oil's very clean though, so you might not see that but yeah, it's dead on the mark of the max. So that's perfect. So we don't need any more oil. Now, sometimes it is recommended, um, well, you can do, I don't always, but you can run your engine for a little bit first because sometimes um, some people like to measure the oil uh, just sort of warmed up a little bit because it can expand a little bit um, and, and then they'll check it from there, which um, you know, is up to you. You can do whatever you sort of prefer. It's much the muchness. I've always just checked it and then gone with it sort of thing. And then, you know, in a couple of weeks time, I'll just check my oil again and see where the level is. And then if it's dropped down just a fraction in a couple of weeks, then I can just pop a little bit more in. But yeah, but always get in the um, habit of that. Once you change your oil, just check it again in another week or two, uh, or, or, you know, if you're home, uh, just mowing your own private residence, just check it the next time you come out to mow. Now the other big thing to note when changing your oil is obviously you need to have your mower on a flat surface. So you can imagine if you don't have your mower on a flat surface then all the oil is going to be tipping the way of the mowers going and then that'll give you inaccurate readings um, of your oil level. So always make sure you change your oil on a nice flat surface like I have here in my shed. Um, and that way I know I'm getting an accurate indication. So what I might do is just one more check, crack that open, and then we'll just wipe that because we don't measure from screwing it in. Flip it down, come back. Yep, perfect. All right, now just be wary too, when you are putting a dipstick down the chute, it is a very thin chute. So be sure not to mistake, which is, this is why the other reason I say to wait and let the oil settle, is because you might have oil still running down inside the chute. And if you scrub the dipper down the side of the chute, uh, then oil might get on there and it might give you again an inaccurate oil level on your thing You might think oh, there's plenty on there and just screw it up and actually uh, There's not enough engine oil in there So yeah, another reason why I just give it 30 or 40 seconds and let the oil settle down So you're not scraping anything off the side here So just to finish up I always just give the area a little clean And just tighten that back up Just like to keep everything neat and tidy Look after your equipment and it will look after you. <laughs> Back when I was working in a mower shop, we used to have people come in all the time and um, say their mower, brush cutter, whipper, chainsaw, blower, whatever, wasn't working. And then I'd ask, oh, when did you last have it serviced? And they say, oh, about two or three years ago. And I'd be like, well, that's probably why it's not working. <laughs> And nine times out of 10, it was why it wasn't working. It needed a new filter, it needed a new plug, it needed new oil, you know, stuff like that. So yeah, like I said, guys, it's really important to uh, at least service your engines once a year um, and more so for contractors who are running them daily. So yeah, just to keep the wear and tear up on your engine uh, and, and, you know, have it running for a long, long time. So yeah, anyway, 
That's it guys, so we're going to wrap this series up here. I hope you have enjoyed this little sort of three-part series I've done for you guys at home who just want to be able to uh, have a go and tinker and try and service their equipment at home. Like you've seen in the videos, it is really easy and it's really quick and simple to do and really um, not costly at all, very cheap. If you haven't seen part one and two yet, make sure you go back on the channel and click on them or I'll leave the links up in the description and you can go and click on them as well. If you have any more questions regarding anything of the service series, just put them in the comments below and I'll be happy to help you out with them. But yeah, anyway, I've got to get back to work before the sun goes down. I've got a heap of work going on here in Brisbane and we've been fortunate to have some sunny days over the past three days. It's uh, I think 30 degree day here in Brisbane, which I'm not sure is in Fahrenheit, etc. but it's pretty warm. But thankfully there's a bit of a breeze. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the series again. Like I said, I hope you're staying well mentally and physically as always, and we'll see you legends in the next video.